Hello, William here again. Now, this week's video is going to be uh, somewhat of a diversion from my normal wood turning. This week I'm going to uh, turn a woodpecker nest from a log. Now, why am I doing this? Now, the reasons for doing this uh, are a little bit convoluted, so bear with me a minute while I explain. Now, last year, our village took part in the South West in Bloom competition, uh, which is one of 18 regional uh, competitions which make up Britain in Bloom. Now, we, uh, as a village, did win uh, a prize in this competition uh, for the best newcomer. Now, this initial success has served to boost uh, awareness, interest and participation in the 2019 competition. But the uh, Britain in Bloom competition is more uh, than horticulture. Uh, and I believe two of the most interesting and uh, useful areas are conservation and community participation. Now, there's already uh, many ongoing activities associated with the 2019 uh, competition and uh, a small group of uh, individuals, including myself, uh, have uh, embarked on a project to um, make some bird boxes. Uh, to date, we've uh, constructed uh, over 70 of these bird boxes, uh, which are suitable for uh, the smaller garden birds, such as blue tits and great tits. Now, despite the fact that our village here is uh, very rich in fauna and flora, I think we're all aware that uh, all wildlife um, is under pressure from uh, human activities. Uh, and therefore, as a group, we've embarked on a project to provide some man-made uh, accommodation, if you want to call it that, for birds, uh, including owls and uh, bats. Now, as an aside to these uh, ongoing activities, I did uh, ponder for a little while on what... Um, uh, additional uh, resources I might be able to provide that would incorporate uh, some wood turning. Now, it didn't take me too long to discover that you can in fact make nest boxes from logs. Now, my garden uh, is frequently visited by woodpeckers, uh, predominantly uh, greens, but also a few great spotted. So I've decided to, uh, for my first project at least, is to attempt to construct some woodpecker nest boxes from logs. Now, not an awful lot of lathe work in uh, such a project, but I do believe that the project is important from an ecological point of view. Also, you would have noticed from the beginning of the video uh, that it's in two parts. The first part is going to be constructing the uh, nesting box from the log. The second part, if I manage to uh, overcome the technicalities, will be uh, constructing and fitting uh, an IP camera inside the box. Now, having conducted a little bit of research, um, I think the uh, size of the log you need to start off with needs to be uh, round about two foot long uh, by about ten inches in diameter. Uh, and believe it or not, amongst my wood pile, the only thing I really have suitable um, is this piece of, uh, I think it's Scots pine. Okay, then, the first thing to do is to get this uh, log trimmed up. Um, it will just about fit in my bandsaw. Uh, So initially I'm going to mount what is going to be the base of the project uh, between centres on the lathe so that I can square off the base so it's a good fit for the faceplate. Now this piece is not too unbalanced but I still can't get it much above uh, 350 RPM, so I should be wearing my face shield as a precaution.
Now this wood is quite wet uh, and therefore before I started this project I took the precaution of uh, giving the lathe bed, um, the bandsaw table and all the other exposed metal surfaces a good layer of machine wax. Now to keep this nice and secure I'm using some uh, two and a half inch screws uh, on this six inch face plate uh, to try and ensure that it doesn't depart the lathe. And also I'm tightening up the two grub screws on the face plate for extra security. Now there's going to be some trial and error to uh, discover which tool is best for this but I have a strong suspicion that not too far down the line I'll be resorting to my Simon Hope uh, easy arm jig. Yeah, finally I gave in and got out the Simon Hope uh, Easy Arm Hollowing Jig um, and I'm still amazed every time I use it just how much material uh, can be moved in such a short time with that 6mm cutter. So you'll have noticed there that the piece actually became loose on the face plate so I'm adding some extra screws. Now having completed the lower half of the uh, project I've now got to do the same thing to the top half. Now I'm not going to torture you by going through the same process again so we're just going to skip through the uh, process uh, in quick time towards the end. Okay, that's the uh, excavation done of the top and the bottom. Uh, not much fun. Uh, wet pine is not the nicest wood to work with. No matter. The uh, Hope uh, hollowing jig uh, made very short work of it, as you can see. Um, so we've got seven inches excavated from the bottom piece and five inches excavated from the top, uh, giving us a, a cavity of about six and a half inches by a foot tall inside. Um, I excavated less on the top because what I actually wanted to do was to cut a 30 degree angle off the top to put an artificial roof on there to make sure the top is waterproof. Okay, so having successfully uh, sliced off 
uh, the top at about 30 degrees. Um, I just need now to work out um, where the uh, pilot hole uh, needs to be drilled in the top uh, so that the woodpecker knows um, actually the uh, log is hollow. So next stage then is to add uh, a roof and uh, also a back plate to be screwed to the back of the uh, nesting box, um, A to hold it together and B uh, as something to mount it on the tree with. Now these two bits of old marine ply here will do as long as I treat them with something, um, but they need to be trimmed to size first. Now here I'm just applying some wood stain and preservative to the back plate and the roof uh, before assembly. Now we obviously need to choose some stain preservative which is not harmful to animals and therefore it should uh, meet the requirements of EN 71.3 which is deemed to be safe uh, to come into contact with animals uh, once it's dry. Okay, now that the uh, the roof and the backboard have had some time to dry off last night, um, although they're going to need a couple more coats before its final assembly, uh, need to think about um, how I'm going to attach the backboard to the nesting box. Now because the, uh, the log is obviously round and the backboard is flat I need to take a sliver off the back of the nesting box so that I've got some uh, firm base on which to attach the backboard. Now to achieve that I'm going to take a sliver about three quarters of an inch off the back here on the bandsaw um, and then seal it before I attach the backboard. Now to mount this um, in a stable way on the bandsaw I'm going to have to temporarily attach the two pieces with two battens either side. Okay here I've got uh, three battens screwed to the log. Uh, two of them are just designed to hold the log in the right orientation and the third here is a guide for the bandsaw to make sure it doesn't wander off too much. Okay, here I'm just going to mark up where the screws uh, will go in the backboard um, and I will use much longer screws in the top and the bottom uh, than in the centre part because there's uh, more wood to play with there. Okay, so I've gone just about as far as I can with this uh, woodpecker nest box. Uh, 
I can't finish it off because I want to dry it out again over the next two months before I put it out in the field. Uh, but in the final version, of course, the uh, back plate will be glued to the two log halves as well as screwed. And it will also be screwed and um, glued in the center to make sure there's a good seal there. Additionally, I'll need to take a small chisel to the pilot hole here to make the uh, hole look a bit bigger so that it uh, can easily attract the attention of a woodpecker. And then, um, of course, we need to think about the lid. This needs to be shaped and finished off and uh, put on the top to make sure that uh, water doesn't ingress through the, in the end grain in the top. It's designed, of course, to be mounted on a tree or something similar, uh, of course, through some screws in the top and the bottom of the back plate. Uh, but I've seen in many cases where people have made these that they've in fact used some steel or nylon banded uh, to ensure uh, a higher degree of security. So what I'm going to do with this now is that I'm going to disassemble it, um, stuff the two halves of the box uh, with some dry shavings and keep it in my workshop for a couple of months um, with a view to getting it a bit drier. I'm then going to seal the top and the, top and the bottom of the two logs to stop uh, future ingress of moisture and reassemble it and put it out into the field. So thank you very much for watching. I do hope you found it interesting um, and I would uh, ask any wood turners who have got an odd log that's not suitable uh, for anything uh, except maybe uh, the firewood or turning into a, um, a nest box of any size, doesn't have to be this big, um, to use their skills to make something uh, to help in conservation. And lastly, I would uh, take this opportunity to wish you all um, a very healthy, wealthy and prosperous 2019.